Hello everybody, this is Turban Deva, and today I'm going to do another unboxing video. Um, well, it's no mystery what's in here, clearly. Let's check it out. The Lapidary of Sacred Stones. Their magical and medicinal powers, based on the earliest sources, includes more than 800 gems and stones. Claude, I don't know French, French pronunciation, but Le Conteau, maybe? I'm not sure. But I looked this guy up recently, and I'd never heard of him before. Um, but apparently he has written a whole bunch of books related to the occult that are, look fucking awesome. He's a professor, I forget what university, but he's like, I think some kind of historian, so it's like, it's all, he's not like a new age author, it's all, you know, based on, you know, historical evidence of, of uh, you know, real, real pagan occult traditions and stuff, which is pretty cool. This has to be the most incredible book ever published on sacred and magical stones. A must-have for historians and anyone interested in the sacred and magical properties of stones. This book really is a magical mystery tour. Sweet. Twenty eleven was published. I don't even remember where I heard about this book, but as soon as I heard historical sources, you know, not new agey stuff, unverified personal gnosis. I mean, like some of that's cool, you know, fine, whatever. But most of the crystal books out there, like they don't. A lot of the associations are bullshit that were made up by, like, the mine, like, different, like, gem, you know, mining industry people just to sell rocks, basically. But it's cool to, to actually be able to look into what traditional, you know, pagan religions utilized these stones for, like the actual indigenous traditions and things like that. I wish they had more of a scope as far as, you know, the sources they look at, but still, this is pretty fucking awesome. Bones of the Earth. Well, I guess I should probably read over the... Yeah, not, not a very long table of contents there. <laughs> but it's a reference, so I guess that's to be expected. The stone is test of virtue. Medieval German Arthurian literature tells us of marvelous stone platforms that only allow a knight. That only allow a knight or a man beyond reproach to sit upon them. The motif appears for the first time in Ulrich von Zatzikoven's Lancelet, end of the 12th century, with a stone called an honor stone. 
Ehrenstein. The topic is so well known that the author does not bother to elaborate on it. The virtuous Volvine was sitting on the stone of honor. You have been told enough times how it cannot tolerate duplicity or hostility. That's interesting. I've never heard of that before. Whoa, what did I just open to? Dracontia. Haha. <laughs> How perfect is that? Dracontia. Draconitis. Draconitis. Whatever. It's a diaphanous white. Resists polishing or carving and comes from the brain of dragons, but will not become a gem unless the head is cut off while the beast is still alive, because otherwise the animal will spoil it out of spite when it feels itself on the verge of death, the ancients say. Consequently, the dragon is decapitated while sleeping. Sodicus, who writes that he saw this stone at a king's residence, says that those who hunt it travel by two-horse chariot, and when they catch sight of the dragon, they release stupefying drugs and decapitate the animal after it has fallen asleep. If it is worn on the left arm, one will vanquish all one's enemies. Camillo Leonardi believes it is the same stone as the Dentritus, the Draconius, and the Obsianus. So, what's the actual mineral? Earl Murrow also mentions Draconite without naming it. There are several dragons with a stone in their foreheads. They cure illness. When the inhabitants wish to slay the dragons, they make a huge fire in the bushes of the mountain. The thick smoke kills the beasts, then their heads are chopped off and the stones removed. I don't know if that's like a historical name for the stone, or if there's, you know, another geological name. So check that out later. Smears. Hermo Eodoion. Or whatever. The stone is called the Sex of Hermes because of the genital parts that it displays against a sometimes white, sometimes black, or sometimes pallid background with a gold circle surrounding it. Pliny. Recitus. Again, not recognizing these names. This is the name for a kind of hematite, according to Socrates. It is called hepatites when raw and militites when calcified. Or calcined, my bad. I don't even know what that means. I'll have to look that up too. It is good for burns. Hepatitis, a gem that heals liver diseases. Its name is coined from the Greek name for this organ. Hmm. Huh. It's interesting. Ooh, color pages. Sweet. Oh, wow. Check that out. Oh, let me get this to focus here. Yeah. Portrait of Roman Emperor Caracalla, Amethyst and Taglio. Circa 212C. Photo by blah blah blah. Who cares? Reclining cedar. He looks chill. Sardonyx. Warrior supporting dying comrade. Looks a little gay. I like it. I dig it. 
Honey and Loth Hair Cross. It's ugly. The Punishment of Tidius. Eat that liver. Eating his liver. Nom 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 nom. Sapphire. That's the sapphire. Electorius Iris. Malachitis. Malachite is a copper hydroxide carbonate that is still called melanite and is described as a green stone whose color is darker and duller than that of the emerald. The name malachite comes from mauve, a color it sometimes possesses. It is found in Arabia. It is good for making tablets and is endowed with a natural medicinal virtue that makes it suitable for protecting children. Those still in the cradle, some texts say, against the dangers that threaten them, mainly evil spells, and this stone protects its bearers from accidents. It is said to soften gold. That's fucking weird, but okay. It is also used to make Venus talismans, which protect against leeches. Malachite also keeps one safe from lightning and night terrors. Moonstone. See, there's a lot of these names that don't seem to... It is pale white with red or black or sometimes yellow veins. Okay. It's not what I picture when I picture moonstone. I have a ring. It's moonstone. Rainbow moonstone. It doesn't look like that, but... Morion. I know what this is already. That's, um, let me not read it. Um, not looking, not looking. Um, that is really dark, smoky quartz, and I believe that's the Scottish Gaelic word for it. Alright, let's see. There are several different kinds of this stone. The stone from India is transparent and deep black in color, and it is also called Pramnion, which brings to mind one of the names for Malachite. There is also the variety from Alexandria that has a mixture of the color of rubies, and the one from Cyprus shares the color of sarda, whatever that is. This seems to have been a form of marble, since the authors say it is good for making tombs. What? Yeah, seriously, Google Morian. It's definitely dark, smoky quartz. So, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like this is like not answering the questions that I had expected it to answer. It's like, this is what they call it, the stones, but like it's not, it doesn't seem to be very clearly connecting all of them to their modern names. So that kind of makes it tricky, like how useful is this going to be? I don't know. Definitely going to have to do, it's like it's, it's a jumping off point for looking up further information. It's still fucking awesome though, I don't regret buying it. I'm going to read all of it. The Vulture Stone. Xanthus. And there's the notes. Bibliography, which is quite extensive. 
and that's it. For, oh, he's a former professor. Oh, I thought he still was. Of medieval literature and civilization at the Sorbonne. I think it's Sorbonne. He is the author of numerous books on medieval and pagan beliefs, including The Secret History of Poltergeists and Haunted Houses and The Secret History of Vampires. He lives in Paris. So yeah, that's it. A lapidary of sacred stones. It's pretty cool. If you're into crystal magic and things of that nature and really want to go a little deeper into the, you know, classical world views of different rocks. This is probably about the best thing out there for it, at least that I've found. It's pretty cool.